Hey guys, Ron here, and once again I brought together three other artists, gave them a prompt, and we all had to create some Pokemon that embodied the description I gave them, which was Dependent Evolution. I told them to make a Pokemon who only evolves in the presence of another Pokemon, and that evolved form incorporates the other Pokemon into the design, like how Mantike evolves in the presence of a Remoraid, and then Mantine has a Remoraid stuck to it. Let's see if any of them stick to those rules. Now we're finally going to reveal our fake Mon to you guys and each other. Let me introduce these amazing artists. Once again, June from Ginger Ninjas here, Moxie is finally back at it again, and please welcome our brand new guest, Nordist. Check the description for the links to these wonderful creators. Now let's finally see the results, but before that consider leaving a like if you enjoy so I know to make part 9, wow, 9, wow, and check out my Pokemon art playlist which has tons of videos like this one where I create new Pokemon. Let's begin with June. Oh, are we just, just jumping into it? Yeah! Oh, I can't, oh. ah! Okay, <laughs> hi. So, hi. Hi. Oh. I had an idea. I don't know. I feel like I just kind of bumbled my way through this one. Good. I, I took the theme. I was trying to think of like animals that would have a relationship with each other. I looked through a lot of like parasitic and like symbiotic relationships, Same. and I wasn't really finding anything that like really clicked with me. Uh, I, I was like trying to think of other relationships I could remember, and I was like, okay, uh, like lion and the lamb, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> oh, like wolf and the the sheep and the wolf, like wolf and sheep's clothing. What if I do mm. something? Kind of like that. See, I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you my first one. This little baby. Oh. oh. I can see where this is going. <laughs> oh. I love the colors. Yeah, Thank the, you. the way that pink and purple pops is sick. I really like it. So this is Lambolus. Uh, she just kind of exists to be cute, honestly. She she's <laughs> just a she's just a little baby Pokemon precursor. Most of the concept went into when she evolves, and I think I want to show the evolution before I start talking about it. I think that might be more fun. What do we do with like, with with wool and stuff? We make clothes out of it. When Lamelis evolves into Doppla, its wool grows out long enough that it's able to stylize it freely in order to adapt and survive its environments. So to display this mechanic, I wanted to make a different outfit for most every kind of weather condition. I wanted these outfits to both look stylish because this is a fashion-based Pokemon, but I also wanted them to look like something you would either need to deal with that type of weather or like would result from it. So for example, the sand design has a face covering to protect her from the sand, but long free wisps of wool that would look visually interesting in weather with strong winds like that. Oh my god. There we Whoa. go. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, this is furry cast form. Uh, Whoa. she has a, a different, like, oh outfit that she wears for any kind of weather, and each uh, different outfit gives her a different secondary typing. <laughs> for a second, I thought his name was furry cast form. I'm like, what? Why'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, why would you do this for a video that's not yours? <laughs> why would all this work? I don't know. I just I just kind of had fun. I was like, what if sheep? What if sheep? For the record, like as much as I have problems with cast form, this is like, it fixes all that and goes beyond. Did you mention fur fro? Did I hear that or did I, use that in my, did I do that in my brain? <laughs> uh, you did that in your brain, Same. but like you're okay. completely valid to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes are really cool too. I think, is that the only one that's gone like, with the full plus cross thing, I know. Um, Wulu's got like a minus one. Yeah, it does. yeah, the minus oh. one. Yeah. Nimble's and got plus. And this actually plus works. Eyes. Yeah, with the plus, oh, that's true. awesome. Oh, st uh, also Chincha. Oh, true, yeah. true. Oh, true. Does everyone have their favorite? Because mine is like the aqua one, like the greeny one. I, just I love that color. God, I'm so bad at choosing favorites in everything. People make fun <laughs> of, of me for this all the time. I can never pick favorites. Uh, I kept it honestly like really super simple for a lot of these. Uh, the, the the concept for this was really just like clothing sheep. Uh, the pink one is its default, basically. It's just like a nice dapper little outfit. Uh, the orange <laughs> is for like sandstorm, so it's got like face coverings and it's got stuff that would like whip around in in you know the sandstorm. Mm, Yellow practical. is for like sunny weather, so I tried to make it look like she was like going out for like ice cream, you know. Uh, it, just like how we change clothes for the weather. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I thought you would only get like one, like like furfu. I guess you can style it, but it doesn't change. This is like this Pokemon is changing clothes, like with you. Like it, it's sentient. I mean, they're all <laughs> sentient, but like this. Is, I don't know why this feels more real. Like this is. I can't, I'm like trying to imagine what the transformation would look like in in battle or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be, oh. it'd be funny to see how like what 
Did you have you thought about that? What it would do? Or I think just, like, the cutscene is you, know? you see the clothes like she, she takes off the clothes <gasps> and you, but the the camera pans up with the clothes like, <laughs> and then it goes pans back down and she's it has new clothes. Like she takes out the clothes, she throws it in the air, and then it comes. I'm back. just so used to like Nintendo silliness, you know, where I would expect the model to like rotate like a degree to the left and a degree to the right and like poof yeah. into something yeah. else. Yeah, that's Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, they do like a flash orb. You know, I also noticed that these all have like those devil horns you might see on like Hot Topic, like those cute angel devil things. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought that that looked fun, you know? No it's no adorable. real reason for it. It's not like out of nowhere because it matches the pink in the ears. So it's like a nice accent. Thank you. Hmm. Sorry, just before like Lambolus, I wanted to say it was like, it sounds like a name like people just make like as a funny name, like Lambolus. <laughs> No, it's a uh, it's lamb, and uh, I think it's humulus cloud. Ah, oh, makes sense. It's like a cloud when you're not expecting any kind of weather. I think my favorite is the purple one. I think I've decided. I'm gonna choose the sandstorm one. I love how it's almost like the jaws. I was worried that people wouldn't like the orange one. The, the, it looks like it's almost got like a, a mouth. <laughs> well, it's almost like a trip pinch. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Is that on purpose? <laughs> uh, is I guess it's not on purpose. <laughs> I originally thought it was like a cottony shape because like cotton, like clothes. Oh yeah. But no. Oh, uh, that's fair. Yeah, I just kind of drew shapes. <laughs> like I said, I was just kind of bumbling my way through this one. I just kind of figured it out as I went. But now I'm kind of anxious because I don't know how this incorporates another Pokemon. <laughs> so I, th this was very simple. This is very simple. Weather, sheep, clothing, like that's it. That's that's the whole thing. Because she is a fairy type that would have dual types, her natural predator would be like a steel type wolf. So I was thinking like something that could kind of be like embodying like razors or like shears, like would destroy the clothing, you know? So, and while I wanted him to look like a wolf, I also wanted him to have a similar enough body type to Doppela so that the later sheep in wolf's clothing split evolution could more easily resemble it. So Lowblade came out a little more friend shaped than intimidation shaped, I don't know. I like him though. I, I didn't go too crazy with this one. It, it's I stayed pretty cute, but oh, I, I did sick. it for a reason. Oh my god! Oh, what a name too. Hello. Low blade. Low blade. Low blade. Low blade. That's sick. <laughs> he's he's got his razor shear uh like paws and his tail's supposed to be sort of shaped like shears. It's supposed to be like if he gets near them, like he totally like shred their clothes. It's noticeable. It's noticeable. it's noticeable. It's noticeable. Yeah, it's definitely noticeable. <laughs> I like how natural the fur looks too. Kind yeah. of like on Perserker, right? I did have Perserker in my uh, in my references for sure. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's always successful when you incorporate an, uh, an inanimate object, but in a natural way. Some people just aren't successful with that, and this one definitely is. I feel like Scarlet and Violet had a ton of like object Pokemon. They just went really literal with things. So I really mm -hmm. like seeing the just like the little inspiration, almost like probably not the way it would work, but like humans got the idea for shears from this thing's tail. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love when like, that happens. Like I mm. tend to get very caught up in like wanting something to very overtly look its typing. So with this one, I, I had to very much so like look at other like like naughty dogs in the Pokemon Pokedex <laughs> and uh. You know, like they don't necessarily scream their typing. Sometimes they just like look a certain way and, and you know that there's an association there. So I tried to keep it pretty simple with him. Can you describe how this coincides with the prompt? Aha, yes. So we have our little Lambalus, who's oh, such no. a little master of disguise. And you know, she's she specifically grows up into someone who changes her clothing into whatever helps her survive the best. If you have her natural predator in the area, sometimes she will dress in a way where she looks like her natural predator to sort of blend in, you know, so like hopefully they'll leave her alone. And they just, they have this funny little habit of these little lambs wander into these wolf packs and just end up getting adopted into them. Because this is a split evolution line though, and it's no longer a doppela, it is a doppelade. It can't style its wood anymore. The idea is that it's neglected its wool for so long, in fact, while maintaining its disguise as a low blade, that that wool has turned to steel, and it takes on a permanent secondary steel typing. <laughs> so, we okay. have a sheep in wolf's clothing. Oh! oh! I am so glad. You so you were scaring me. I'm like, did, she, did, did they not do the prompt? <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. I no. swear. You were scaring me because I thought there would be some like predation going on, like blood. <laughs> I thought you were you were about to embarrass me in front of Nordist. I'm like, no. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I, I tried to keep it kind of wholesome, where it's like, even though it's like a natural predator thing, like it's the it's the found family Pokemon. It you know it has its its new little wolf pack family, and it grew up with them, and it, it doesn't really change its clothes anymore. It's it's wool kind of hired and in, hardened into like steel steel wool, but uh. It's got a permanent seal typing now, uh, and, and it lives with its its little wolf friends. I love when people do that. That's what Pokemon's all about. Also crazy eyes. I love those eyes. Ah, oh, thank you. Additionally, I love the naming because previously when you first showed the evolution, it had Doppel in it, right? But mm-hmm. then you think like Doppler, oh. maybe some weather kind of deal. But here is Doppel as yeah. in Doppelganger. Yeah, you got it, you got it, yeah! Levels. That's so That is cool. big brains. That's like six brains at least. Oh, why are you guys so good at naming Pokemon? <laughs> My friend Robin helped me a bunch with these. I think the next prompt was originally going to be this, which is like in, an inverse of a saying or something like that. Oh, so I just got to it early. <laughs> yeah, you just did it. I'm just, I'm just... I'm one step ahead of you. Five steps hey, ahead, even, right now. I thought you said you followed the rules and did three Pokemon. This is four Pokemon. Hey, plus no, he, he said, How many did you do? And I said, Uh huh. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was very deliberate about that. Well, I thought you were referring to the forms. Oh, uh, you know, uh huh. That's Now I'm scared because <laughs> I'm probably the only one with three. No, don't no, worry. Ronald follows his rules. I follow my own rules. <laughs> oh, wait, I think I went yeah. I did not. but... Yes, I do have just three, everybody. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Wait That's till right. the end of the video to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Nordist is next. I am. All right, so. Oh, we're going right to it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh. Like, my channel is very STEM-based. It, like, I have this whole persona around, like, doing a STEM-based region, right? Yeah. So I thought, you know, as a kind of an introduction, might as well go on full nerd, you know? <laughs> I feel like we always end up with someone with a bug, by the way. Always. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bugs are amazing. Yeah. Well, there's bugs always at least hard. someone who says or feels that bugs are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is like the third time yeah. someone has said bugs are amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the lessons you learn from biology that you still most people remember is the mitochondria. It's uh-huh. the powerhouse of the cell. And so what's a better animal to use to represent mitochondria than the mite, the oh, first syllable. That's so good. Oh, mite, oh, mite, I get it. What's mitochondria? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. no, so, great question. Because it's the little thing that's in cells, right? Um, and it makes the energy for the cell. Or it makes ATP, which is energy, that the cell could use. That's You need the mitochondria to do anything. And the reason why I chose this is because there's a popular theory out there that like maybe mitochondria weren't part of our cells in or like no not us but you know but like animal cells. Yeah. And then later there's something called endosymbiosis, which is basically a nice way of saying eating <laughs> someone else, but they're still alive. <laughs> So basically, back when all life was basically just single cellular, it ate something like a mitochondria and incorporated it into its, you know, offsprings. Mm-hmm. Got exactly. It. So, as I explained, basically, kind of spoiled the whole uh, dependent oh! evolution that <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do. <laughs> so if this is the mitochondria, we need the cell that eats this, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. A duosion. So oh, here's whoa. a lagocyte. A bunny, a bunny cell. Yeah, instead of a lagomorph. Oh, a it's so cute. Cell. Thanks. Um, cells come in all sorts of shapes and sizes now, right? See. So I was looking at what kind of cell actually uses mitochondria even more, and turns out it's our muscle cells because uh, our muscles have to do a lot. Makes sense. That's why the ears here are shaped after those muscle cells. Like fibrous. Muscle. Well, muscle cells also come in like three different shapes, but this is one of them, which is... They look like little eyes, but they, you know, overlap with each other and all. I really like this design. Like, it's nebulous enough to be like, am I safe? But it also, like, it's cute in like a sea slug kind of way. Yeah. Like, you can imagine it like in an animated film where you see one, but then you see like a whole pack, and then they overwhelm the protagonist. Yeah! I'm almost getting, you say anime, I'm getting like Ghibli vibes or something somehow. Yeah, it's very Ghibli. Or uh, like the first Digimon movie. Oh! But I did have like Jawas in mind, little hunters. It does look very Star Warsy. Yeah. Super cute. I really like it. I really like your uh, line and sh- it's like such subtle line and shading style. I feel like it's almost a 3D model. It's like 
Yeah. It's so well drawn that it just is amazing. <laughs> it's a good art oh. style. What's funny is that Mitomite looks a little bit more evil than Lagosite, but like that's the one that potentially eats it. Yeah, and like size wise, I I mentioned how Mitomite is pretty small, but like Lagosite's supposed to look smaller. It's all supposed to be some kind of subversion. Mm -hmm. What is it like? Stretch? Is it is it smaller and it like stretches, or it's just bigger? And yeah, smaller? exactly. Ah, oh, nice. Ah. See, so you get this guy and you defeat four mitomites, and I never say what happens to those four mitomites. <laughs> They're eaten. <laughs> Predation. Oh, there you go. Oh. Sick. Oh. What? And it gains the electric type. That's so cool. Oh, I love the lines that are like the they're like muscle lines or whatever. That is <laughs> that is nuts. Thank you. It's like a wear bunny. I really like the evolution in its body type. Yeah, it's Thank like you. so, so unique. unique. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love when we find a completely unique body shape for a uh, fake one after what yeah. like thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of fake one online. Finally, a new. One. Also. What's what's going on with the like underneath its arms? I can see the the, the antlers or whatever of Mitomite. Is yeah. it like it looks like, like it's squished, squished it. under there yeah. sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, they're hands now, but they're just big old blobs because Mitomite's like blobby. Good lord. But yeah, I wanted to accentuate that these are muscles, and like I wanted like big old strong arms. But then later when I added big old strong legs, it kind of minimized that effect. So it's like mm. cut off the legs. Oh yeah, now this draws your <laughs> you, you totally get it without the legs. It's cool, and that's another one you can sort of see it moving, like it's jumping around on its on its arms. The idea of a muscle cell evolving into a muscular Pokemon is really that's what we need. I like that a lot. Is it kind of? Now it's little bunny ear eye uh, things. It's almost got like two faces in there now. Is there lore to that? Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Oh. So <laughs> if you look at muscle cells, like real muscle cells, um, Lagocyte is more based off of myoblasts, which are like the baby form of muscle cells. They don't know which kind of muscle cells they are just yet. Stem muscle cells. Like most cells, they have one nucleus, you know, just one little central area. Kind of looks like an eye, but you know, it's kind of like the brains of the cell. I don't know. But muscle cells go under some weird fusions whenever they do grow up, and some cells end up fusing together, so they have multiple nuclei. Wow. Damn, that's how you design a Pokemon. I definitely learn something new every time I do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Objectively, the most educational video in the series. That's the goal. Because, like, Pokemon, like, the beauty of it, ever since Gen 7, it kind of opened my eyes when I saw, like, Wishy Washy. I think I saw a comment say, like, oh, fish do this? They school together? <laughs> and it was, like, clicked in my head. Like, for me, that was Finding Nemo. For yeah. some people, it's Pokemon. Well, okay, but I'm not going to call out that comment, but I never knew there were people who don't know that fish, you know, have schools or, like, swim together. Oh, yeah, I do know that. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, Moxie knows it. Yeah, I know that. That means everyone knows so, it. Yeah, if Moxie knows it, I mean, the bar is pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just surprised that someone, like, learned that through Wishy Washy, but that's funny. <laughs> I am next! Let's go! Ooh. So, uh, I'm, the, I'm in the middle of developing a new fake one region, too, and the Pokemon I made today are heavily related to, like, the main legendary of the story, and I came up with a very touching relationship between these two Pokemon. The first two are, like, very straightforward, just like most of you guys, but the first one is the most straightforward. It's literally, like, a normal, just, raccoon. A normal type raccoon so you don't have to like you know ogle at it don't be like ooh ah when it's just a normal raccoon <laughs> like um <laughs> everyone prepare your ooh ahs okay <laughs> <laughs> it can be best friends with lamelis it it, oh. it would okay again the story i this is my favorite story i've ever came up for with uh, for a pokemon but imagine again imagine like a raccoon that it thinks it's suave and fancy even though it eats trash um mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is, would actually be the first raccoon pokemon because like a cool fact is that Zigzagoon is actually a tanuki, not a raccoon. So I'm making a Pokemon raccoon. It's just a normal type, so it's tough to come up with a facial pattern without alluding to any other type like grass or fire. The eyes were tough too, since they'll be surrounded by a black mask pattern, which means I can't make his eyes black either. It'll all start to come together when I gave it these uh, fancy curls. I thought that this Pokemon is already eating garbage, so it doesn't need to also look like garbage. Quite the opposite, I think the contrast of a scavenger that looks dapper and cool is actually what makes it interesting and an actual unique concept. In the end, I gave it a radioactive green eyes and a green strip to allude to the fact that this Pokemon has been exposed to toxic waste. Here is Raccool. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. 
It's just raccoon. Oh, I like that green. I love that's the green. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely thinks so. Is it like the night goggle kind of green? You know, night vision. It, night vision. Yeah, it yeah. definitely has night vision, but I, there's a reason why it has green eyes and a stripe. And I will tell you mm. that in a second. <laughs> Man, that you've nailed this Pokemon like double shade line. That is that like definitely the cleanest Pokemon double shade lining I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it is very fun when the double shade is successful. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> True. It even has a texture, that kind of texture the official art has. Uh, Raccoon is highly intelligent and very egotistical. They know their home turf inside and out. They make connections with a lot of stray Pokemon, but never really form like close bonds with them. Like with all the, you know, he's just that guy that, you know, everybody knows, but nobody's really friends with. Um, <laughs> but since birth, they eat what they can. Uh, they, can they eat what they can find, uh, just like trash, basically. Uh, to them, it's a gourmet meal. <laughs> their stomachs can withstand even the most rotten garbage. Uh, they believe they're very popular, but in reality, many perceive raccoon as a nuisance. Just, I mean, I have raccoons in my backyard, same thing. Even though they're cool, they're a nuisance. This is the most important part of the lore. He has the ability immunity, you know, so he can't get poisoned. Okay? So remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trash muncher. Literally. It's a, basically an early root Pokemon, but again, I said this is associated with the legendary technically, so I love when that happens. You said not to oogle, but I do, I actually really, I like the, like that coiling in the, on the inside of the ear. There's like a lot of just movement in the, the shape of the head and stuff. Mm. It's, there's a lot to look at, even though it's simple. Well, the, yeah, the whole idea originally I was like, I was gonna make a raccoon and I was gonna make it very like dirty looking. And I'm like, but like it's already <laughs> eats garbage. So how about we do a just juxtaposition where it's like, no, it's fancy. So it has these curls and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So next I'm making what is the equivalent of a mythical Pokemon in my region. Ooh. Okay. This is not the legendary that I was talking about that you won't see in the video. The Pokemon that this, that this little guy is connected to is the mythical of the region. And it's actually the byproduct of my main legendary's radioactive nature, basically. So the main legendary that you won't see, it's radioactive. And the mythical that you're about to see is the byproduct of that, of that uh, radioactivity. So basically just imagine a girl made of toxic waste combined with uh, those nuclear uh, cooling towers, but also a princess. Did anyone else just hear the Simpsons theme song? Or was that just me? <laughs> <laughs> Very much. So this is basically a girl hiding inside of a cooling tower that kind of looks like a cloak and a dress. She has droopy toxic waste bangs and fumes as a ponytail. She's sad for now, but she'll eventually get a happy ending. She has a headpiece that looks like a tiara, but here's the secret. Her cloak and crown are both part of the legendary Pokemon I'm going to reveal in a future video. Originally, I want to make her eyes in the shape of uh, the radioactive symbol, but thought it was hard to read her emotions, so I kept it simple. A few added details like more animalistic feet and colors that match the concept, radioactive green and hazard color eyes. Now the legendary that produced this Pokemon is actually related to an existing Pokemon, so let me know what you think it is in the comments. Here is Nuclearl. Whoa. 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 I love the lab coat. Ooh. I mean, yeah, it's it's like a mixture of like the, the cooling tower, a coat, also has like a tiara, so it looks like a princess, but it's like, again, th these are, nu Nuclear is born from the waste produced by the legendary that is hidden beneath the region and they cannot control their massive power and as a result every pokemon around nuclear becomes sick except for poison types who are immune to it um this lonely pokemon is ostracized by like most pokemon and rests in just soft piles of garbage bags um and they have a signature ability called decay uh which poisons any pokemon on the battlefield when nuclear is switched out including your own pokemon in double battles oh i love the hair too like the front hair dripping down it's always fun when you can make like a natural part of the body look like something like more human, like like a hairstyle like this. Mm -hmm. Also, like the 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 ponytail sort of fades, what goes translucent or whatever at the top there. Yeah. Oh, it's not like the, the green line art on top of it. It's real good. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, it's just the fumes. You know, dissip is, is dissipating a word. Is that the word I'm looking for? Dissipating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the whole point is that she, she can't really form any bonds with people because she gives them cancer. <laughs> oh, and she's sad about it. Oh, poor thing. Um, except for poison types, but she doesn't really want to hang out with Trubbishes all day. Um, although she's... What the Trubbishes do? The Trubbishes didn't do yeah. anything, but she can smell and they smell bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so by now, I guess you may see where the story is going. The only place Nuclear hangs out is the dump, where Raccoon just so happens to frequent. Um, and as a result of eating garbage, Raccoon is immune to Nuclear's radioactivity. 
Um, and Raccoon shows nuclear all around town and they quickly become friends. Um, in fact, the reason Raccoon has green eyes is because it's been eating garbage contaminated by nuclear all along. Uh-huh. Oh, the psych out. This is a love story. Better than Twilight, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have both of these in your party and level up Raccoon, it will evolve and combine with nuclear. So now Nuclear Earl rides the raccoon like a steed. It'll be more monstrous. I'm thinking of a combination of a wolf and a bear, but the facial patterns will be very much uh, still raccoon-like. It's scruffier and way more powerful as a result of being irradiated. The front paws are partially decayed, revealing energy. Now we have a much happier Nuclear Earl on top, with her arms and cape revealed as she pops out of her cooling tower cloak. I hope seeing this Pokemon smile will bring you some joy. Racolossal. What? Whoa! No! What the hell? Oh, that is mad. And this is my favorite Pokemon I ever made. <laughs> With the shapes on, on the raccoon? This, yeah. that's sick. That's sick. So cool. Oh my god. You can't split these two Pokemon, right? Can no. you? Or can you? You cannot. Oh, I want to see that wolf just chilling. I mean, wh- what do you call him? Raccoon? It's wow. Yeah, it's a raccoon wolf bear now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the patterns. Yeah, it reminds me of um, is it Zygarde kind of? I like mm-hmm, when I, like you, mm-hmm. you kind of just think slightly think about other Pokemon because I've been watching um, Loxton's videos re- recently, and he's been talking about how like you know all Pokemon are kind of like connected a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're all like ancestors of everybody, and everybody's like connected sort of. Exactly. Personally, I'm a huge. I've said it a billion times on my channel. I love it when Pokemon have explicit connections to other Pokemon. Yeah, um. but even when they're yeah, even if it's just like. Like, obviously, I don't imagine this, you thought of Zygarde being connected here, but my brain just, like, slightly thinks about it, and then that just feels like it adds depth, even if it's not true, you know? <laughs> well, the question is, I mean, it's hard to tell, but the legendary <laughs> that this Pokemon is connected, that these Pokemon are connected to, is actually a real, uh, it's an existing Pokemon, like a real Pokemon, Ooh. a real legendary. The question is whether or not you can tell which legendary uh, mm. Nuclear is a by- byproduct of. Oh, um, okay. Rackalossal is the guardian Pokemon and Rackalossal has become lifelong partners with Nuclear and Rackalossal absorbs half of Nuclear toxins allowing them to control their power and not indiscriminately hurt surrounding Pokemon and Rackalossal can barely contain the radiation that is syph- that it's siphoning off Nuclear so that's the reason why the fur on his front paws are partially decayed revealing nuclear energy and Rackalossal mm. takes down enemies with irradiated slashes that can dissolve boulders that's that's my lore. Um, and this pair just travels around the region doing going on endless adventures. She's, you know, Nuclear is finally happy. Yeah, I love her little personality shift. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I love that. How adorable. I can't yeah. stop staring at this guy's face. He's got such a good shape to him. Thank yeah, you. It's it was tough because it's like, yeah. you still have to make it look like a raccoon, but it's like a wolf now. Uh-huh. They're so strong. It was definitely inspired, uh, visually at least, by Princess Mononoke. Um, oh, yeah, Moro. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love the colors. The art's just so clean. I can't. I can't. <laughs> this is evidence of practice makes perfect, everybody. <laughs> you know how often s- sometimes people make a comment like, oh, this is better than what we got in actual po- <laughs> This is better than Calyrex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew people would think that. Yeah, yeah. F- Calyrex. That's what's so funny is that I love Calyrex. <laughs> I hate Calyrex. <laughs> I l- that little b- I think Calyrex, like, looking at this, like, I just wish that, you know, something changed with Calyrex once it fused, right? The horse mm. changes, gets p- new patterns, changes body uh. shape a little. Yeah, well, even, I think we come back to it a lot, like, the personality shift. I don't think anything, like, it's not like his face changes or anything when he gets on his horse. Yeah. He but gets there's, like, like the lore things. here and the story that is is a yes. Yeah, we should have, I guess, learned more about his bond with the, the horses. So it's more like mm. wholesome like this, I guess. Because again, I love their bond. Mm-hmm. And I also just, I'm, I love character development in any show, in any franchise. Character development is my favorite. And like seeing like a character that going from sad to happy is always just the best. Um, Same. Great. That means it's Moxie's turn. All right. All right. Show us three Pokemon, Moxie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. I'll start with the first things first. I gave myself a challenge. No bipedal Pokemon. Finally! Ooh. None. That was my first challenge because I've been made fun of in this Discord chat too many <laughs> times. <laughs> oh. I don't know too much about animals. This comes up every time. So the first thing that I that my brain went to when we talked about dependent evolution was like June, Predator, and Prey. My first thought when I thought Predator is an eagle. My second thought was deer. I don't know if they have an, an interaction or not, but that doesn't matter because I didn't do a deer. 
Good. Then I started thinking about, and this happens a lot with me, like what animals or like things don't exist in Pokemon that I feel like, why don't they exist? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I went yeah. with the Gryphon oh. and the Pegasus. This, they don't exist at all, right? No. I'm pretty I'm sure. Still, is the closest, but you know, not the same. I wouldn't, yeah. Galarian Rapidash could have given us all. Yeah, that's what we thought. Sucks. Yes, so ever since Galarian Rapidash has came out, I've been like inside mad. Like a little Real. bit pissed off. Real because high. it doesn't have wings and its eyes are annoying. <laughs> its eyes are slightly <laughs> annoying. My Pokemon uh, somehow, uh, you know, evolved with inspiration from these Pokemon, for example. So we got, uh, you know, Griffin is like a lion and a, a bird. And then of course our horse unicorn things. This whole concept actually started as just an eagle, but slowly over time it became more Griffin-like. And I drew on the background layer. How, uh, I've been doing this for 10 years. How am I still drawing on the background layer? Anyway, proportions are everything when it comes to base form Pokemon. So he's got a really big head, but his wings also only take up about as much space as his head does as well. And his body is smaller than everything. He's got a nice happy Pokemon smile, but to drill in the predator sort of part of this Pokemon design, I made sure it looked like he was in sort of mid swoop. With a bird tail, this literally does just look like an eagle. So I decided to leave the legs fully colored in so they look more like lion legs and switched out the bird tail for the lion tail thing. All right, here we go. Predafin. Oh, finally. Aww. A normal Pokemon. <laughs> A little normal griffin bird thing. No, oh, this is really good. I think this is your best in terms of like realistic Pokemon looking kind of Pokemon. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I was quite happy guy. with how it, it really It really felt. looks like Pokemon. Yeah, the head especially like Exactly, it's the proportions that you have to... Like, people always think it's like the art style they have to nail, but it's the proportions you have to nail to make it look slightly yeah, believable. Agreed. Especially for the little guys. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it just it just shocks me that a griffin doesn't exist. And this was really fun because... Uh, and so you really, like, you sort of see the, the difference of, like, the bird on the top, lion on the bottom, and hopefully it, like, comes together and it is, like, a little griffin guy. I love the chubby wings. I don't know if this is going to be spoiling or not. But like I said, Predator versus Prey. So Pred Predafin, is that how you say it? Griffin, Predafin? I don't know. Yeah, Predafin. Good. I think yeah. Predafin. <laughs> Predafin are playful but predatorial birds or griffins, whatever. Their nature is to prey on young Preyuni for their infinity energy. I've been learning so much about Pokemon <laughs> lore. I guess I'm not going to go into it on this. But watching oh a lot God. of Loxton. I've been watching so much. <laughs> um, but it is said that something special happens to Predafin who go against their nature. Oh, so it doesn't need it in order to evolve. <sighs> You'll see. <laughs> I wanted this Pokemon to feel kind of frail, like it can't protect itself too well. So I decided not to go with the thick My Little Pony legs and tried to give it a pose to feel like it's kind of looking over its shoulder, like it's in the middle of being attacked. I started with a small horn, but over time decided to push it bigger and bigger because the whole point of this Pokemon is unicorn. So it needs to be a really obvious feature. The eyes and hair were both a bit of trouble. I started with sort of oval shaped Eevee eyes and the hair started looking like way too Fluttershy. So I eventually landed on a bit more of a normal mane and some eyes that can have a bit more direction. Because this is a pre-evolution, I wanted to hint at what it evolves into. So I gave her little tiny wings everywhere, which might hint at what's to come. We're here to sell toys with this one. I went all in on the pink blue color scheme. Did some real traditional unicorn stuff. I did start adding the yellow in there, which looks pretty amazing, but I decided to bail on it just to make it not look too complex. Maybe you should have kept it. You tell me. Oh, Pre uni. Wow. Oh, wow. So, like I said, adorable. I feel like <laughs> the wings are so tiny. Pokemon just needs its basic unicorn. <laughs> the tiny wings are so cute. <laughs> so tiny. Love the so, color um, scheme too. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I feel like everywhere I go, for example, every like cake shop I go into, or like every just like normal shop, there is a thing that has a unicorn horn with the little flowers. You guys, mm -hmm. do you guys see that everywhere? Yeah. I was like, I'm throwing that in there. This has to exist, and Pokemon will make bank out of <laughs> out of merch. I think. <laughs> Definitely. So Preuni are shy Pokemon that are often terrorized uh, by wild Predafin. It's said that if a Preuni and a Predafin are able to become friends, something special happens. Dude, it's so small. I just looked at it. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, it's a height. little guy. <laughs> a little guy. <laughs> well, I put them together to sort of, so you kind of feel their relationship. Um, Very you know, nice. You kind of feel like there's a connection here because they have the same eyes. True, true. It's a really good detail. And like having it flipped on each other. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like the composition is very nice. So, I did not do just three Pokemon. My brain went on a rampage. <laughs> I initially decided that I wanted to make a griffin, right? Yeah. But then I remembered there's other, like, there's hippogriffs. And I, I'm i pretty sure hippogriffs, are they lose the lion part, and at the back of their legs, they have horse legs instead. I believe that's true. Sounds right. So that's where I wanted to end up with this, uh, you know, the idea is a fusion, right? But because I made <laughs> Predafin a griffin, 
I wanted to explore the other avenues of the potential evolution here. So if these two become friends, something will happen. But I want to really quickly show you guys what would happen if they don't. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Oh my God. How many did you make, Moxie? <laughs> not too many. Not too, Moxie. Look, right, I'm going in. <laughs> Let's say uh, Predafin, they they do what their, uh, you know, their nature is. They prey on Preuni. I don't, we're not going to go into what happens. I don't know if they kill any. There's no murder in Pokemon. You know what I mean? It just, it's just happiness and sparkles and rainbows, but. No, there's definitely murder. Yeah, I know there <laughs> is, isn't there? <laughs> I wanted to make a pretty natural evolution to Predathan, but something a little darker, more sinister, considering it's literally evolved from killing a bunch of little ponies. <laughs> I started with a very Generation 1 eye, that little angry rectangle with a little pointy eye that you see a lot, but I eventually reverted back to this Helioptile sort of similar eye style, just to make them all feel consistent. I also nearly gave it the sort of Shadow the Hedgehog Luxray upward spikes under the back of its head, but I battled on it. It was too... <laughs> It was just too much. It now has more of a sleek kind of blades you can head, I guess. And the color scheme was a bit tough to figure out. I kind of wanted to go regular Griffin colors, but ended up going really like dark with it. Well, let's say that does happen and Predafin defeats a certain amount of Preuni. It will become the dark oh Griffin. Oh my Griffin God, Tour. why'd you do this? This is too cool. Oh. <laughs> I was about to say finally a non-sexy Pokemon, but it's, I, I'm sure people would call <laughs> this is sexy. This is definitely sexy. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> a Predafin that kills enough Preuni will embrace its savage side, becoming a Gryffitor. And this Pokemon passes that tradition down to the other Predafin. So that's oh how the God. this sort of continues. It's Dude, so the sleek. The detailing on his, like, his claws is so good. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a Pokemon that embodies its types like perfectly as much as this. That do be a dark flying type. It's so <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> and I see the Pyro inspiration. It works. Uh, shall I keep going? Yeah. No, stop. <laughs> now you can go. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. If that's what happens when Predafin succeed in getting in defeating loss of Preuni, what happens if Preuni get away and live and live escape or survive long enough? You know what happens to them if they evolve without their dependent evolution? All right, time to sell some toys. I just wanted to make a. Pegasus with a lot of wings with a unicorn horn. There's nothing fancy here. I just wanted to make what needs to exist. I basically wanted to push everything that was in Preuni's design out to the max. So the feet wings went massive, a lot bigger than they look right now. Huge body wings. I wanted to push these little uh, Togekiss curls around as well. Just helps it feel like it fits more into the Pokemon world when you do that kind of thing, I think. And her hair and tail grow massive as well. I gave her a ponytail, which kind of doesn't make sense, but I always find it fun to think about the sort of things in the Pokemon world that Pokemon likes to imply would influence humans. So maybe this thing somehow had the first ponytail? I don't know. Pega Uni. <gasps> Wait, are you oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my I god. love her! No, stop! <laughs> this is literally a June design. <laughs> what are you doing to me, Moxie? <laughs> I told you they need to make this. Why are they not made a unicorn oh Pegasus? Oh my god! <laughs> Damn. Full on magical girl. I just don't get why it doesn't exist. It'd make them so much money. <laughs> It's so good. Like I said, Preuni who adapt to their encounters with Predafin eventually grow out their little wings, increasing their speed tenfold and allowing them to take to the skies too. And they vow to protect the other Preuni. Silhouette is amazing. Oh, for Thank sure. You. The normal version still has, you know, trans rights. Those colors. <laughs> of slay. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> Happy Pride. Yeah, true. This is coming out in June, yes. But the shiny. It goes golden. I have a habit of making golden shinies. I just love... I want a good uh, shiny that it feels special. It also, I'm pretty sure, is the same colors that um, Galarian Rapidash goes when it like lights up. Or it might be its shiny, I can't remember. But yeah, so there's a little bit of a callback there as well. I even know Galarian Rapidash lit up too. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks so much better when it lights up. I feel like it should just be like that by default, but... Just making sure everybody knows that Mars Shadow can change forms too, right? Some people don't know that. It goes green, right? Yeah, which is even, like, that makes it amazing. Wait, I did not know that. Oh my god, he does! Yeah, my shadow looks amazing. Now tell me, <laughs> did you make five Pokemon? <sighs> I made five Pokemon. Oh yes, my we're god. ending here. Oh, Moxie! <laughs> because, yeah, because well, you still I haven't didn't fulfill done, the prompt. <laughs> I haven't done the prompt yet. Yeah. <laughs> so the prompt needs to appear. Hippogriff is a fusion of an eagle slash a griffin and a horse, right? Not a unicorn. I wanted to give a Hippogriff that unicorn horn. 
All right, here's the proper evolution that actually follows the rules. <laughs> I knew I wanted to make a hippogriff, but I did not know if I was going to be able to make that beak work. So I actually started with just a little uh, unicorn nozzle. What do you call that thing? The nose? And started getting really majestic with everything. I wanted to bring in little references from everything. So Pega Uni's tail kind of is here to represent the hair. Its front legs are lion legs, like Predathan's little legs. Its personality becomes a little bit more serious. And I forced myself to get the beak in there, and I think it totally worked. I do not understand why Pokemon based around these things don't exist. All right, here we go. <laughs> get the f out of here. These look so cool. <laughs> the unlikely friendship. These two Pokemon go against their nature and become friends. And then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> they fuse together, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So I, I don't know if this is like a, a friendship evolution. My, my kind of idea was initially, because I, I always come back to Nuzlocke, so I like death in Pokemon. Um, and so I originally thought, you know, more power of friendship. Let's say you capture a, a Griffin, uh, I've already forgotten its name, Predafin and a Preuni, and they get max friendship in your party, and then one dies. What? The other one embraces the soul of the dead one or something. <laughs> And absorbs evolves them into, into this their huge form, being. Which is the Unigriff. <laughs> I thought that would randomly become Takes a dragon. their body. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the, I, I believe that infinity energy is like the life energy of the, of Pokemon. I think that's what I've learned. Well, technically, that's, that's what so Magirna does. That's what Magirna does. That's so tragic. Or they just become friends and they fuse together and then this happens. So Good. I don't know. Tragic or wholesome? I'm not sure. <laughs> Pre Predafin becomes friends with Preuni. They become a Unigriff. Yep. Okay. Sure. That's the prompt one. The other two are what happens if the prompt doesn't happen. God, <laughs> those are the extra ones. Delete them. Yeah, yeah. Take them out. Because they're so good. <laughs> they're amazing. Thank you. I just threw the Dragon Fairy on there because I think Dragon Fairy would be a sick typing. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I don't care. I did it. <laughs> I think the way that it doesn't make sense is what makes it make so much sense, honestly. <laughs> like, it's such a fantastical, like, kind of kind of typing that like why wouldn't this be like a dragon fairy type i like how nordist and moxie have opposite themes science versus magic mm -hmm. true well yeah three yeah of, exactly i guess yeah. most of us did friendship is magic friendship yeah. is magic you know what so true yeah. especially when you're eating your little mitochondria friends and you use them as shoes yeah it's funny <laughs> nordist picked like the bad ending the best <laughs> friendship of all step on me <laughs> That's the end of the video. We did it. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for being worthy of being here. The highest praise. Each each episode is better than the last. Uh, it's it's crazy how this works. Go check out the description for all these lovely people, and go check out June's video. It's uh, it's on screen right now. I I, hey. I was on, I was there on on their channel. It's pretty fun. Ron was there. Oh wait, it, that is true. It was a sequel to a video <laughs> that we did on my channel. That is also true. I forgot about that. We did that. Damn, I'm excited. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs>